How y'all doing? What a stage. I told CCP they didn't have to do the whole GDA 4.4 thing just for me, but then they insisted, so welcome to my house. <laughs> this is what I do all day, trading. <laughs> when they finally remodeled the station, um, I finally had something else to look at, because I don't undock, so this is all I see all day. All right, so we're talking um, about trading trust and trillions today. If um, you don't know what I do, I'm Oz. I uh, run Eve's largest public investment fund. And that in itself shouldn't really be a thing because in Eve, you know, you shouldn't be trusting anyone, especially not with your ISK. But for some reason, I was able to convince a whole bunch of people to hand me a lot of ISK. And I invested in the GDA market. So for the next 45 minutes, I'm going to share uh, a few stories, uh, strategies, and, uh, um, and general things I do uh, in, in Eve Online. We'll talk about how I built that trust, how I uh, get these, uh, these people to, to hand me their money, um, how I then take that money and invest it in the markets. I'll share a little bit of the lessons learned that I've um, you know, gathered over the, the last few years, creating content and, uh, and streaming EVE Online. And then if we have some time, we should have time, like five minutes for a few questions, um, uh, if, uh, if, if you'd like. Uh, otherwise, there's a round table at um, I think 4 p.m. in one of the breakout rooms. So if you want to uh, come chat about everything that we talk about here, then um, come find us there. Uh, CCP Psych and myself are going to be there uh, hanging out. All right. So I'm, I'm Oz. I've been uh, playing EVE since 2004. Um, I was already out of college uh, in 2004. So by that, you can calculate that I'm really old. <laughs> Um, I, I was in finance back then. I, I was trading uh, in stocks. Uh, I, I got a business degree. And so from day one, I was into markets and trading in EVE Online. And th that part of EVE Online is really what, um, what I think is very unique uh, and it, that I can't find in any other game. This, this player-driven economy, this ability to actually trade, to influence the market, uh, very realistically, it's um, it's just something that keeps me coming back to Eve Online and um, uh, and absolutely love it. I became a Twitch streamer in 2019, um, and um, you know, I before that I didn't even know what Twitch was, um, but I realized that I could um, share the fairly unique playstyle that I uh, that I have and the tools that I have on uh, on Twitch with my my viewership. So I became an uh, an Eve partner. Um, and my guides on trading are used in the EVE Academy, so uh, I'm very, very glad that um, some of the, the, the tools and content that I produce are, um, are being made uh, you know, accessible for, for the community, and I'm uh, getting some attention to a play style that's just not very, uh, I think, not, not, not played by a, uh, by a large percentage of the player base. I have a Discord server of uh, a whole bunch of trading uh, nerds on EVE. Uh, if you Google that, I'm sure you'll find it. Uh, come, come join uh, 3,000 of us on, on there. And I, as I said, I run the largest investment fund in, uh, uh, in EVE. So um, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Quick disclaimer before I jump on that. If you can't tell by the funny accent, I am German, right? So uh, just to manage expectations, there will be no jokes, but we'll probably finish on time, all right? So. <laughs> Bear with me. The motivation behind everything I do is threefold. One is we're playing a sandbox. All of us are playing a sandbox. And in a sandbox, per definition, you should be able to do almost anything that you want to do. So for me, gaming, competitive gaming meant I wanted to be the best at something. And being old just means I can't keep up in PvP. <laughs> All right? So what I can do is. I can spend some time creating amazing spreadsheets. Um, I can eke out an advantage in the market. And so that is uh, my way of creating something that matters. And that would, that's what gives back or motivates me every day to play uh, EVE Online. Two, I spend a lot of time sharing or uh, making tools for EVE Online. And that, for the first few years, maybe, that's a lot of fun. And you can make a lot of money in the market. And it's great. But after a while, it just, you know, if you're, not, if you're not telling anyone and you're not sharing that experience, it just becomes kind of, kind of, kind of bland. So that's uh, one big motivation for me as well, is to go out there and share uh, everything that I've created. 
And then, as I said earlier, I, my play style is fairly unique. I don't leave the station. I, I just station trade. I have, a, uh, I have a lot of capital to play with. I uh, play with the markets. Sometimes I man manipulate the markets, uh, not going to lie. And um, that is a play style that I want to showcase because it's, it's out there. I can't get it from an, any other game, right? And I want, for one, people to see it, but also CCP to see it, you know, for, for, for them to know that there are people out there like us that are playing the game in a way that might not be the most obvious one, um, but is a very, very important one to um, a, a small but, Im but important par part of the player base, all right? So, first of all, building trust. So, I said in the beginning, I run an investment fund. I have around 4 trillion ISK that I manage for about 500 investors. And that in itself shouldn't be possible in EVE Online. You shouldn't trust anyone with your ISK. What are you guys doing? Why are you giving me your money, right? <laughs> like, this, this, this should not be happening. But for some reason, I was able to do that. And there's three, there's three reasons why that works. For one, I... I put a face to the name, right? I, I, I go out there on Saturdays on, on Twitch, uh, and a lot of you have, have seen my face uh, out there. Um, you know, I, uh, I, 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 show, I show you guys my, I talk about my motivations, I, show, I, I tell, tell you what to do, and it's very, very, m or it's a lot more difficult to run away with the money if you show your face all the time and everyone knows what you look like, right? That's, that's just, just, just a general tru truth. Second of all, from, from day one of this operation that started about three years ago, I, I'm sharing all my trade secrets that I used to make money with. So I am taking away the whole motiv motivation that you could think why I should be running away with that money by showing you all of the top profitable items, by sharing all my tools, by all of that. So I have convinced people that I'm just a, generally nice, a, a genuinely nice guy and I don't need to make ISK. Right? At least people believe that. It's, it's true. <laughs> Trust me. Um, and then again, it's not economically feasible for me to run away with the money because it's, uh, by now I, I, I have a little bit of a reputation. Um, in, uh, in the community, I make, you know, nobody's getting rich of content creation in EVE. Right? <laughs> like, there's my, one or two people that can maybe live of it, but nobody's getting rich. So I'm not getting rich, but it's at least enough for me not to run away with the money because the reputation that I've made is kind of, kind of beneficial to me. So putting a face to the name, as I said, I, I stream on Twitch so people know what I look like. Um, it's, it's accountability, it's building up the first trust. Of course, sometimes it helps when people like Hilmar share my content and say, this is really good. I mean, you know, this is uh, the guy with the 20 swords that you saw uh, yesterday. If he says it's good, how bad can it be? You know, this guy is not going to run away with the money. The second part, sharing secrets. So something I do, um, for example, is every year I show what the most profitable items uh, of in, in trading were for me in, in that year, right? That's, that would be the number one rule of... Um, uh, that that most traders will will not will not do if they're if what their goal is is to make money, it's really not that big of a deal, but it's a big like symbolic step, right? And then more importantly, maybe I have created a together with with the community, I've created a a community version of my trading spreadsheet that will track your profits, that will look at your portfolio, that will tell you which items to buy currently, um, which items to sell on a technical analysis basis, right? And this tool is out there for download. Thousands of people have downloaded it. Uh, you all can use it. It's, uh, it's free. Uh, we maintain it a little bit. It's got an instruction uh, in it. So the biggest hurdle for a lot of people to go into station trading is they know that they can't do it if they don't know how to spreadsheet be a spreadsheet warrior, right? Now, the Excel, the Excel uh, integration that we saw yesterday is going to help, sure, uh, in, in, in breaking down that barrier, but until then, you have my spreadsheet to kind of uh, guide you in that world. And most people will start using that and then move on to doing, developing their own tools or, um, uh, or, or, or maybe even not, maybe even just continue doing that, but they can station trade without having that huge barrier uh, of, of you know, macros and, and, and JavaScript in front of them. Um, 
I also talk about skill farming, and skill farming, you know, if, if you talk to people in the, in, in the community, it's, it's, it's something that's a little bit pushed to the side, nobody really wants to talk about it, because it's like, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a fairly unnatural play style, I would say. It's not even a play style, it's a way for people to make money, but it's legal, it's there, people are doing it, and people are making a lot of money with it. And so, what, what I do to build trust is I democratize that information. Right? So when I, uh, when I started doing this investment fund three years ago, um, I noticed that a lot of people were talking on the, on the download. Somebody is all of a sudden selling you know, hundreds of skill injectors. How did you get them? How does that work? So I show what you need to do to set that up, and I show in my spreadsheet that I share um, uh, every week what the current profit is that people are making of skill injectors, right? And it's, it's, it's complicated, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to go into that, but it's something that I think should be out there in the community because anytime you have, you know, a, 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 s a small amount of players um, making a lot of money by a very, uh, by something that I, that, that, that I think is, is more of an unnatural play style, then I want to at least let everyone know that this exists because this impacts the economy in a very, in a very significant and large way, and so that information needs to be out there. And then, this is less about sharing secrets, more about, again, the democratization of, of, of data in EVE. This is the Tranquility Trading Tower. Now, if you're, you know, most of you are, uh, are more or less hardcore EVE players if, you're, if you've made it all the way to Iceland now, right? So you know what the trading uh, tower is. It's that, that, that player-run station that is one jump from Jita, in perimeter that um, houses most of the Plex and large skill injector um, trade and used to house most of the buy orders because um, the, 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 the discrepancy between the fees on, in NPC stations vers versus player-owned stations used to be very significant. It's not like that anymore, but still, they're making a lot of money. A few years ago, the Tranquility Trading Tower um, was making trillions and the parties that are sharing that were sharing this money, they were all at war with each other, right? So this was like an unspoken secret. Everybody knew it was kind of funding the war, but uh, everyone was fighting each other on in the world, which you know they they really were. But then they were funding the war by having a, a common um, operation. So what I wanted to do is again, I wanted to go in and I wanted to show that this is happening, and I wanted to show that this is the amount of money that is coming out of there. I'm not, I'm not even saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, hey, good on you. You're making a lot of money, but people should know. And I put that out there. Now, the, the, the real number, Billy says that number is more like 1.5 trillion, not 2.2 trillion, but, you know, um, it's a lot of money. So um, I do stuff like that to, 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 to kind of, it's kind of like data journalism for, for EVE Online. And that, again, in turn, it builds trust. It shows people that I am more or less on the, on the side of the people, on the side of the community, uh, and trying to um, make sure that that information is out there. And then, you know, reputation, I said nobody's getting rich of EVE, but uh, certainly there's, there's, you know, if you're a streamer and if you're um, halfway successful and you're making money here and there, uh, and so for me it's just not economically feasible to run away with this money yet. <laughs> it's not big enough. So, 4 trillion ISK is a lot of money, right? And you will, you will hear a lot of people that are talking about ROIs in the, uh, in the, in the EVE markets and they will say, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I doubled my, my ISK last week. <laughs> this is, these are people that are not investing trillions, right? If you're investing trillions in the market, your options are much more limited because you're, you, you have limiting factors such as, su such as risk, overall because you have a significant portion of the market or, or time complications. So it's, it's kind of complicated to, to invest for trillion. It's a, and, it's, and it's actually a lot of work. So I have devised some strategies and some tools to make that whole process easier and more enjoyable because in the end, it's a game for me as well. I, I need to have some fun, right? So as I said, you, we're talking about very, very large scale investing here. Um, and so, low volume, high margin items are not what we what we can invest in here. This is not this is not you know where you go and you you look at you know this 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 module that that has 10 million ISK a day turnover. That's not going to help you at all, right? You need to value the actual time that you're 
that you're investing in the markets. Just like you have to value the time you spend mining. Now, I know the people are out there that think my minerals, the minerals I mine are free, right? They're my natural enemy in the Eve habitat, right? Um, if you think that, um, um, you have a problem, all right? Because you're, at, you're, you're going to not make economically rational decisions, and that's going to not allow me to predict what you're making because you're not acting uh, rationally. So, um, so it's fine. Of course, it's fine, but just know you're creating problems, all right, on the data side. <laughs> Speaking of data, I'm gonna. This is the only slide that has math. I promise, right? Um, uh, uh, However, if you're mathematically challenged, this whole, this whole thing is going to be like an uphill battle for you, right? <laughs> so, my fund has 4 trillion ISK, okay? Easy enough. As I said, there's two restrictions. One is time, right? I want to actually limit the amount of time I spend running the fund, because I have a life, right? And this is not a job, at least not yet, right? So, I say arbitrarily, which is fairly close to the truth, I want to only handle 200 items in EVE Online, right? Now, that's for some of you, that's going to mean something. For others, I'll show you what that means in a second, all right? So that's one restriction, time. It's limited. Two, risk, right? And that has, that's multifaceted because, for one, I need to diversify. Anyone knows that, right? If, I mean, like anyone that's inv investing anywhere knows that you need to diversify, right? Even if you don't know what that means, you've heard that before, right? You need to diversify. So... If I put that into math in here, for example, I don't want to have an insane amount of items, but I'm limiting the maximum number, and I'm, I want to limit the amount of trade days that I'm actually holding of a certain item, right? And what I mean by trade days is I can look at the amount of sell orders available in the forge, like right? the, the region where Jita is in, and I can look at how much I'm holding, and I can say, if I take the daily volume times five, that's the maximum amount I want to hold. You know why? Because stuff happens in EVE, like patches, right? People sometimes, Ratari, I don't know if you're out here, right? But sometimes you decide we're going to uh, double the amount of ice in the game, or we're going to double the amount of um, moon material, right? Prosperity, right? For me, that's a problem because then I immediately I need to liquidate a lot of stuff. If, I, if I'm holding way more than five trade days, this is a serious issue because I, I can't liquidate. That's why I've, I've recently lost a lot of money on all, this, all of this Moongo stuff. That's why I'm still bitter. Right. I'm sure you can't tell. So, simple math again. 400, 4 trillion ISK, 200 items. That means 20 billion per item, roughly, on average, right? If I take the 20 billion and I divide that by the five trade days that I just explained, then that means I can really only trade in items that have a daily trade volume of four billion or more, right? So the, the total trade that is happening every day in, in the forge should be at least four trillion, right? Now, to me, that means the world. To you, you're sitting here, you're like, I don't, I don't know what that means, right? So let me sh I'll show you pictures. pictures. There are 40,000 items in EVE Online there are a few more, but a lot of them aren't active, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, 40,000. <laughs> if you break that down and say, I only want to look at the items that have a trade volume of over 1 billion ISK every day in the forge, you're already cutting that down to only 1,500 items. That's not a lot, right? If I'm then breaking that down into the items that have 5 billion or more ISK traded a day, we're only talking about 400 items. And you remember how I wanted to trade in 200 items? Um, I'm, I'm, by, by that definition, it's about you know, half of those items that I'm going to invest in. So it's actually quite small, the amount of items that I can invest in. What's in that little yellow box? Right? If you do market trading, you know this, right? But um, I'll, I'll give you some examples of what's in there. Most of that is Plex and Skill Injectors, right? The, Plex and skill injectors are a huge part of the daily trade volume in EVE Online, right? And the problem with investing in those is that the stuff that impacts the Plex prices and, and skill injector prices is mostly stuff that happens outside of the game. So 
this is not, this is not, uh, this is sometimes a little bit impacted by what players do, but this is much more impacted by, by sales, right? This is impacted by, you know, uh, crises that we're seeing in the world right now. This is, uh, you know, sometimes uh, CCP decides to raise prices. Actually, they've only decided to do that once, but they did that last week or two weeks ago, and they made it. They made the price for Plex and Skill Injector spike, right? So this is stuff where you gotta be very careful. You gotta know. Uh, you can't know, but you got to be reacting very quickly when there is public announcements. Moon materials, backbone of tier two production, obviously very, uh, very, very high volume. Um, ice and fuel blocks, certainly basic minerals. Um, salvage materials, not all of them, just like two or three of them are actually of a, of a good volume uh, that you want to trade in. However, very cyclical and, you know, it's stuff that people loot and then sell on the market. Um, so it's very easy to acquire, so it's one of my favorites. Planetary commodities used to be very relevant in terms of um, uh, uh, implant production, but now also in uh, you know, faction ships, capitals, there's been a lot of uh, flu fluctuation around uh, the use of planetary commodities. Ships are interesting because when people start trading, a lot of, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to you know, buy a bunch of ships and then sell them later for higher cost. Because... It seems like people are under the wrong impression that the price of a ship has something to do with its popularity. That's, I think, the biggest misconception of people trading in EVE Online. Because people are saying, oh, look, the Proteus, it, it, it got uh, uh, buffed a couple of weeks ago, so I'm going to buy a whole bunch of pro pro I don't know, pro Proteuses, uh, and I'm going to get rich. But that's not what happens in EVE Online. What happens is, like, yeah, sure, it's the price of that Proteus is going to maybe spike uh, for a day or two because some people can't wait, but then production is going to, producers are going to move in, they're going to uh, reduce that margin again, and the price is going to drop. Prices for ships are governed by raw materials, and as long as raw materials doesn't change or the availability of raw materials doesn't change, the equilibrium price of that ship is not going to change. So ships are actually not something that I invest in a lot. Structures, yeah, but um, you know they're 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 very big, so it's it's kind of clunky. So you you trade more more through contracts, which makes it very difficult. Implants, faction, and dead space modules actually are are a fantastic trade item. Um, they again they're looted by an activity that a lot of people do in game. They're worth a lot, and people love to buy them to use in their ships. So th that's actually a, uh, a, a very, very efficient trade item that you can make a lot of money with. Insignias and abyssal filaments are among my favorites as well, but you know, I'm not going to go into, into each one of them. So if we break that down by trade volume, we say, OK, what, what does the overall GDA or forge market look like? Daily, we have about 14 trillion ISK uh, exchanging hands in, in, the, in, the, in the forge market. Okay. 23% of that is actual Plex. So if a quarter of all ISK that is being moved in the forge is Plex transactions. So you can't really get around it. If you're a large-scale investing, you really can't get around investing in Plex. Another 16% is skill injectors, and then ships are 10%, and then you already have skill extractors. So you can see that almost half of that pie is mm, real money adjacent products, I guess. Modules, 7%, and then there's a whole bunch of other like small stuff. The, th the other 30% is so big because you have stuff like blue loot, red loot that is not really trade. It's just you know people doing stuff in game, bringing it to Jita, and then selling it to NPC buy orders. That's not really trading, right? If we look at ship types specifically, that's just a you know just a for your information because it's a nice graph. If you look at the the ships that are traded in Eve Online. Um, so that's basically all subcaps and freighters. Above that, it's you know again, it's too clunky to trade in in, in high sec. Then, 40% of that is battleships. Okay, that to me that's always a surprising number. This is this is not item uh, numbers, but this is you know ISK value. So that you know that that explains it a little bit. Uh, battle cruisers are only 6%. Cruisers are 20%. Very very popular. Um, right, uh, uh, a lot of that is, is one ship. I'll ask you about that in a second. Um, and then again, you have a whole bunch of small stuff, and then you know, freighters seven percent, jump freighters ten percent. That's kind of significant, but that's just because they're very, very expensive right now, right? 
So let me give you a little pop quiz right now. Uh, on, the, on the battleships, what do you think is the number one most traded battleship by value? Not so by overall trade volume, not by item. Anyone want to take a guess? Sorry? Varger, I heard Lishak, and you said? The rattlesnake, yeah, it's probably good. Um, just by price alone right now, it's the Marauders winning out because they're just so expensive. <laughs> um, so the Paladin, the Varger, and the Golem are actually one, two, and three by trade volume. Um, for battle cruisers, it's the Dracovac, the, the Drake Navy issue, and the Gnosis. On the cruiser, um, <laughs> yeah. I actually won a beer yesterday in the security panel because I said, what's the, 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 they asked the same question about what's the most uh, popular cruiser among botters, and that was also the Gila, right? Um, and the Ishtar and the Tengu, right? Those are the, the most popular ships. So, that's the backdrop against which I am investing. So those are the items that are, that are relevant at all. I, I call these relevant trade items because I have to kind of take these 40,000 items and put them into a, a, a manageable uh, sandbox to, to play with. I've created a custom trading tool um, to help me cut the time down that I actually spend doing all of this because I could, I could be trading all day, but I just, I just can't, right? So what I've created is what I call the dashboard to rule them all, right? This is the, this is the, the Bloomberg terminal version of EVE Online trading, right? Um, I have done all of this without the Excel integration that was presented yesterday. Um, I actually don't need, don't need that. Uh, I, I uh, have uh, a lot of um, friends and I have a lot of knowledge about taking all the data from the API and putting it into spreadsheets. So what you see here is the dashboard that tells me every day which item category that I just talked about is moving in which direction which item category is trading at which percentage of the 52-week trading volume, so compared to yearly trading uh, volume, and also price. And also, it looks at that availability. It says, okay, which items or item categories are currently scarce in the market and which ones are abundant. And that means that I can see you know, shortages coming. I can see which items are currently flooding the market and might be cheap to pick up. And then last but not least, also, I also look at the, the daily trade volume in each of the categories, right? Up until here, it's all just dashboard information, which is very, I mean, this information is very important because it allows you to make quick decisions, but this in itself is not a trading tool yet. What makes it an amazing trading tool is the querying that I can do with it. So what I do is I have a, a little query, and this is the reason this is not it doesn't have a good UI is because I'm the only one using it, right? This is not something that I'm giving to people. So if you're wondering, his spreadsheets are really ugly. I, I, I use them just myself. And what that says in the top left corner there is I'm looking for items that are trading at 90% 52-week average. So these are items that are trading at least 10% below what the item was trading all year. I want items that are trading above 100% volume, so it's items that are hot, that are trading right now at a, at a higher volume than usual. I want items that have less than five trade days available in the market, so kind of scarce items. And I could reduce it by, by category, but in this case I didn't. And then I want items that have a trend above zero, and that just means I want items that are trading higher today than they were trading yesterday. Now, this all seems very theoretical, but what this does is it cuts two or three hours of work or maybe impossible work down to about three seconds that I can do every day. And I have about five of these queries where then I get an output like this. And this table right there went, just went through all of the relevant trade items in EVE and gives a neat, neat little list that tells me, okay, What's the item? How much does it trade actually on trading volume every day? How is it in relation to the, uh, the average price, volume, and availability? It color codes it nicely. I can copy this, and a lot of people don't know this, but you can actually just paste it into the market browser in your, in your station, in, in, in JIDA, or wherever it is you're doing trading. But if you're not doing it in JIDA, you're really doing it wrong. Um, so you paste that 
in the browser uh, or in your, in your market window, you can go through. Some of those items are not going to be great because this tool only does technical analysis. Some of these items are going to not make sense to trade in because, for example, here we have you know, m minerals, and the tool just says, hey, minerals are really cheap right now. At least some of them are, right? And we know, or at least you know, if you're doing micro trading, you know, well, yeah, but you know, we just had prosperity. So you know, a lot of the items were reintroduced back into the game from a scarcity phase. So we actually have um, reasons why these are trading very cheaply. But this, again, this, is an, this, is, this allows me to quickly look at these items. Uh, there's very rarely uh, does it happen that I don't have the biggest money makers of the day in this, in this type of list, right? Maybe not with these exact parameters, but I play with them every day, right? Eve wouldn't be Eve, and I couldn't do what I do in Eve if there weren't just amazing third-party developers in this community, right? So I want to do some shout-outs, and I want to maybe inspire you if you're looking to either get into trading or you have a specific niche case that you want to use a tool for. I want to mention some, some, some of a plethora of uh, amazing tools, right? Adamforeve.eu is the closest thing to my trading tool that you're going to find in terms of a, a web tool. So um, if you don't know it, absolutely amazing. That he, he's got a margin finder on there. He's got a material influence uh, tool where you can look at which items go into uh, which uh, fin fi finished goods uh, and um, how big the trade volume of these finished goods is. Uh, he has a dashboard just like, just like mine, kind of like mine, which you can tweak a little bit to your, to your liking. So Adam for Eve, best overall tool. Jeev Assets is a ja Java-based application that I'm sure a lot of you use for character management. Uh, you can look at your assets, transactions. The nice thing about that is you can, you know, you can use it to find assets that you thought were lost. Like you'd be amazed how many assets you might have across <laughs> space that you didn't know about. But you can also copy that out to spreadsheets if you want to do additional work with it. Fuzzwork, a lot of you guys know that probably because of the LP uh, tool. That, that he's got on the website, but also he's got an API for market data, so that's how I can um, draw a lot of the market data into my, my spreadsheets. Mocam.dk is a tool that um, actually came out of our community because um, for the longest time, uh, from the EVE API, you can only get current market data. You can't get historical data. So if you want to do what I do with the comparison against yearly averages and, and monthly averages and that sort of stuff, then you need historic market data. And so Mocam is a person from our community who created a tool that lets you draw a whole bunch of KPIs um, that he calculates based on the data that is available from, um, from, from CCP. And I, I couldn't do my spreadsheets without that. Um, and then uh, evecookbook.com, um, fantastic site if you want to know what the blueprints take for each item. So you can go in and um, look at currently right now, look at not only what it's going to be now, but also uh, what it's going to be on CC with the changes that are, that are uh, coming to, to blueprints here very soon around the corner. And the great thing about that is you can actually, he's got an API where you can pull that data into your spreadsheet as well. So what I, what I do on my query, one of the KPIs that I can query on as well is compared to the build cost. So I can do everything that I just showed you and then, and then say, and now show me the items that are like that, but are trading below build cost. And that's, that's a real game changer because, you know, if you look at, for example, um, you know, capitals or, or, or freighters in, uh, in the last few weeks where, um, or in the last few months where they were all trading below build cost and they were really a, a good investment, you know, if they hadn't been changed back now, but you know, they, they were a very good investment, uh, and that's not possible without things like, uh, like Eve Cookbook. So the last thing I want to tell you is some notable trades, because I know, you know, this was a lot of spreadsheets, data, abstract concepts. So what does that, what does that mean in game? What, I, what do I actually do? What are some notable trades? Um, the Plex for Good campaign was actually a, a time where a lot of people that may have had historic characters uh, used as an opportunity to liquidate a lot of skill points and get out of the game that way, right? In a, in a, in a way that, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, very, very old players that, are, that have not played the game in a long time, what, um, what they want to do is they wait for a Plex for Good campaign so they can donate the, uh, do something good with their Plex, right? In this case, 
there were players that were donating a hundred thousand plex and more, right? I, I know at least one person that that did that, which, which is which is insane. That's a large chunk of the the five hundred thousand uh, that we that we saw yesterday, um, or that we that we saw in the end of the plex for good campaign. The problem those people have is they need to find find players to buy all these skill injectors from them, right? Because who's got five hundred billion lying around? I do. Um, <laughs> And so uh, it doesn't take long for those players to find me. Uh, and uh, I bought uh, over 500 billion in, in skill injectors um, during that time, a few months ago, not knowing that CCP would raise prices and thereby um, making not only the Plex price, but also the large skill injector prices explode. So that was probably the single most profitable trade that I've um, that I've done uh, in the last two years since running the fund so that um, I bought them all at 590 and they're over 700 now so that's that, that was good but it's not all roses um, it's it's also I, I've also lost 150 billion on on some of the um, moon material crash because I was just too heavily in uh, into moon materials and when CCP announced the um, the implementation of um, uh, of compression for for Mungu, and then also within the same month, uh, basically uh, increasing the amount of uh, available moon ore in the universe. That just crashed prices. Uh, they were they, the crash prices crashed too quickly for me to react, uh, and so I lost a lot of money in that. And then this is more of a public service announcement because I'm always surprised that not everyone does this. Um, so right now is Capsuleer Day. Right? And everyone gets praxis, gnosis, and senesis, right? And if you're talking about anyone in trading, it's very clear that when everyone gets something, the prices just crash, right? So just by buying up all the praxis, gnosis, and senesis in this week, I made 20 billion last year, right? Um, Apparently, this is, st this is still not out there. I, I fully expect to not be able to do that anymore because I keep telling people, you guys need to do that. Um, so this year, I'm hoping that, I'm, I'm hoping just as an experiment, that the price drop isn't actually going to be that big because people anticipated and I'm, I've educated enough people. So let's see if that experiment turns out. But so far, I've made out uh, like, a, like a bandit on those uh, society of conscious uh, thought ships, which are amazing, by the way. All right. I'll leave you with some lessons learned, and then we'll do some Q&A if you guys want. One, this is a sandbox, right? You can, no matter what your skills are, you know, you can find your niche. And why wouldn't you, if you want to, why wouldn't you try to be the best at something, right? You don't have to go out and, and shoot stuff if you, if you don't want to. You don't have to be in a large alliance or corporation. I am neither of that. I can't, I can't, I, can't, I don't undock. I can't do anything in EVE. I really, this is all I do, right? But I can be the best at something, or at least in some niche, or at least be among the best, right? Because the best ones aren't the ones up here talking about it. <laughs> They're just quiet about it. You can build trust in EVE. So this is, this is big, right? Because everyone's going to tell you it's not possible. It is. It's, it's just a lot of work, right? And, and not a lot of people um, actually get to experience it. But I'm, I'm very privileged, in, privileged in, in, in that respect. And it's, it's, a lot of, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun and I get a lot of enjoyment uh, out, out of doing what I'm doing. So I'm very happy that, that I get to do that. And then thirdly, I fully thought when I started this, right, that I would be ridiculed that you know, the community would just say, what, like, what, how, how dare, how dare you? And, you know, the, you can't, you can't take people's isk, like, uh, and, and I got a little bit of that, you know, I got like five or six people, but I got like a thousand people saying, oh, how cool, you're doing something that other people aren't, you know, CCP was super supportive, my stream is very successful, so, you know, sometimes the community gets a bad rap on being, you know, very, very, uh, you know, very cutthroat or very, you know, uh, mistrusting. That's not the experience that I've had at all. I've had a fantastic experience. It's been a, a ton of fun, and I'm, I'm just very thankful for you all, for, the, for this community. Um, this is my fa first fan fest, and it, it's just, um, it has solidified everything that my EVE experience has been in the last few years being very active in this community. So um, thank you all for, for that. And so... That's that's really is it it for for my presentation today. Um, we'll we'll take a few questions. I I honestly the number one question that I've already gotten 
um, that I'm going to preempt before somebody asks it is, when are you going to run away with the money, right? Because I'm sitting on all that money, and I think I've already explained, uh, uh, I, I've, I explained why I'm not going to run away with the money. Um, however, um, if I would ever run away with the money, this, this moment right here would probably be the best because there's a lot of press here, CCP is here, there's a lot of you watching, right? And it would be the most fun time for me to right now say, I'm going to take all of your money and I don't know, you know, if I can't, I can't real, I, it would have to be a plex for good thing, right? Um, but today is not that day, right? But if, if I get invited back next year uh, to, to do the 20 year anniversary, maybe that's a good time to just liquidate everything and give it away. All right, so thank you guys. Um, if you have questions, let me know. If not, there's a round table at, uh, at 4 p.m. today. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Uh, will you double my ISK if I ask you? Yes, so uh, will I double his ISK is the question. So uh, absolutely. Um, my return on investment is not nearly 100%. Right, and people don't expect that just because it's 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 that big, and I'm very transparent about what I do. Uh, so, ISK doubling is not actually uh, what I do, but of course, that is also a very popular question. And typically, my answer is uh, yes, of course. Just give me your money, I'll double it. Um, I'll share that in a second. I see Dunk uh, at the uh, at the at the mic there. Well, first, I just want to thank you for doing the show. It's a great thing to watch while I'm doing my space work, so I appreciate it. Thank you. So my question, uh, I do a lot of industry work, not as much trading. Yeah. So my spreadsheets all monitor the costs of things across the different hubs and in NullSec, that kind of thing. And what I see from time to time are expensive ships, T2 ships like Hacks, uh, different expensive ships to make trading below the maximally optimal build cost mm -hmm. and in significant numbers and multiple orders for that where it is now, that is the default market price. So I'd like to get your take on what you think is going on because suddenly, I, I don't know how they make any, I don't know what's going on there. Mm -hmm. So my theory on that is, um, for one, it's those people that don't value their own time and, and, and resources. So if... Um, if theoretically, let's say theoretically, those were bot accounts mining, right? Uh, bot accounts, if they, if they, no, I'm not saying this is going on, right? <laughs> um, but if, if the ex in an extreme case, it's a bot account mining, so they don't value the time, they don't have to value the time because it doesn't exist, right? They have a very different price point, right? Also, you would be surprised at the amount of people I talk to that do industry just because they like doing industry. So. A lot of times what, what happens is people will, will, will not correctly track the cost of their raw material. And also, if you just look at it from a data perspective, it might not be profitable, but maybe their price point is completely different. And you're saying, I mean, I know you do it on an industry scale, right? On an, on an alliance scale, I, I, I know that. But your price point might be, even in your alliance, might be way different from another alliance. So I think in the end, we're never going to know. I think it's a mixture of price point and people not valuing their time. I think there's, I mean, there are a ton of bad decisions being made, economically speaking, in EVE Online. It's, st it's staggering. Like, I, I think the people making good economic decisions are definitely in the minority. And I don't know if that's reflective of the real economy out there, but uh, it's, you know, I've, I've, I've given up trying to, trying to assume that everyone makes good economic decisions. On the topic of bots, have you considered um, implementing a high-frequency trading bot to automate your own work? Um, so what the, the stuff I do is all already geared towards minimizing the amount of time that I spend. And so the, the, the time where I could optimize, I guess, is to, to take that list and generate the input for a market order um, uh, automatically. But my strategy, and this is where I, I am very different from, I think, other station traders that I know and talk to, is I don't, I don't do, you know, I don't have 30,000 outstanding orders on 100 accounts. Like, that's not the stuff I, I do. That's what um, people like Eve Trade does, for example, right? I, I have one or two accounts. I have a few hundred orders. I don't, that's not what I do. I, I do strategic long-term investing. And so... 
for me, actually, I'm very close to the optimal way of trading my strategy of buy and hold, right? Um, uh, I can't optimize that in terms of, um, you know, saying uh, this is a spreadsheet that tells me exactly buy a hundred of this item today. That wouldn't that wouldn't fit me with my strategy. But that would be a smart thing to do for other people. I don't know how you ha would have to be careful with the EULA though. Right. Somebody asked about the ROI. Um, I'm 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 much more. So I used to be in the range of I have a smaller fund with uh, more more high value items where I, I would reach around 20% uh, uh, ROI on a yearly basis, not a monthly basis, right? And um, and in in uh, on 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 my large fund, it's it's more you know like three four percent. But these are people investing like 100 billion ISK. So I mean they're not doing anything with it. Um, and if if I'm just riding the market a little bit, um, then they're happy. Is there uh, an in-game item you wouldn't like to sell because you uh, do like it a lot? Um, that I wouldn't sell because I like it a lot? Yeah, because you have it in your hunger, your first chip or something like that. Uh. Ah, all right. I, I do. I do. I'm... Um, you know, and again, I'm, I'm going to have to call out Ritardi again. I don't know if you're here, but the Signal 25 needle jack filaments, I have a real problem with them. And uh, that, those, those trigger me every, every single time because they were released to be like a very high value item back in the day, right? Um, and I bought almost the entire market of them. Uh, I bought them at around 5, 10, 20 million a piece. Now, I don't know if you know what they're trading at today, but. CCP, very soon after the announcement that they're going to be very important and very great, released them as a login item for everyone to have, which is fantastic if you're holding half the universe of them, right? So I have a, I have a humongous pile of worthless Signal 25 needle jacks in there, and now they've at least taken them off the login rewards again. So actually, their value has you know, quadrupled probably since that happened, but I will never, ever get back to the 10, 20 million. So that's the item that I'm just on principle, I'm never selling again because I'm just, I'm just keeping it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 4 p.m. Uh, is the round table if you want to talk, uh, uh, nerd out about spreadsheets and everything. I thank you all um, so much only for, for being here, for, for you know, listening to my presentation. Um, and please approach me if you have any questions. We'd love to meet as many of you as possible. All right? Thank you guys so much.